she's just amazing. She um, um, she's, was the consummate caregiver for my sister and I, uh, and not in a way that spoiled us because we were taught uh, discipline and responsibility and accountability, but at the same time, she was always there for us whether we were happy or sad or mad or whatever we were going through, uh, and she still is uh, there for, for me today. I'm the baby of three children. I have an older sister and an older brother. Uh, we grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, my mother was a homemaker, and my dad was a, a clerk in a hospital for 50 years. Most of my friends that I have today are the same friends I had in elementary school. You know, it wasn't that long ago, but my mom was in the generation that had to sit on the back of the bus, right? So people kind of forget about that kind of thing now because it seems so crazy. But uh, that's only one generation. And uh, so she went to a uh, all-black school, public school, uh, and high school. So her first experience with people that were not uh, African-American uh, and in a large part was in college when she went to the University of Missouri. And I walked into the dorm, and of course they called the mother, uh, the mothers were house mothers, and things were different, and she was so upset that these two black girls were in her dorm and she called the housing department and she says, I've got two black girls here and I have no idea where are they going to bathe? And then we thought, why is she asking where are we going to bathe? And of course I was a little flippant too and I thought the color doesn't come off. I think I was in first grade and I was one of very few African-American students. One day I, I, we were going to the restroom and, and uh, the little boy who was next to me in the urinal um, decided it would be funny or humorous or whatever he thought to, to, to urinate on me. Uh, so he turned himself around and, and he actually urinated on me. You know, uh, uh, for whatever reason, he thought that was something he, sh he, he could do and get away with. I think that was my f first time sort of realizing, acknowledging, uh, feeling, understanding uh, that I was different from the other kids. We entered Georgia Tech. The word nigger was always on his dorm door. So all of these things as they evolve, sometimes I see a repetition of some of those things and that's why I'm very concerned about the climate today. Yeah, I think, you know, the pendulum swings back and forth and I'm, I'm really worried about where we are now as a country when you think about police brutality and Black Lives Matter and you think about Charlottesville and things that have happened at universities recently and, you know, you wonder if we're not uh, devolving back into a darker time. I'm very concerned. I'm concerned about the kind of world my daughters are going to grow up in, whether they'll be given all the opportunity that they deserve. College is supposed to be a place of knowledge and enlightenment, and, and we've got people that are in their developmental stage uh, socially and emotionally. The college campus is kind of a, a crucible for all of this. Even today I look at things and I think it made me, I always tell my grandchildren, it's the struggle that really makes you strong. We were very spiritual in believing that, you know, you treat somebody like you want to be treated. And however, it did not affect me personally. It did not affect him personally. You know, I, I hope that our um, students uh, uh, get the right sort of uh, guidance and they're receptive to it and that they can sort of rise above this uh, kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, nobody is, is born racist or prejudiced. You have to learn that. And uh, uh, if you can learn that, you can also learn uh, not to be. Uh, and so I'm hopeful that uh, UC Davis in particular is a place where people learn to be tolerant of each other and learn to uh, accept one another and uh, uphold the principles of community and, and those sorts of things.